That is right, it looks like Synology are engaging with an Intel-powered CPU once again on a new NAS system uncovered by Reddit user Gummy Bando, for the record, solid username, who managed to stumble across on a Synology download pages a new firmware update for the B Station series, a BST1708T. Now, me and Eddie have heard little rumours in the background that Synology were working on an extension of their B Station series. Hell, a lot of us shouldn't be surprised that B station the one bay device it was never going to be the only roll of the dice from them on this realistically there was no reason why Synology was ever going to create a brand new operating system on a single device they were always going to branch out how Ever. Further digging into those download sections have revealed certain things. One, this model ID BST1708T, when the original B station was BST150 4T. I'm available at short notice at parties. But also, when we dig a little bit more into those download sections, we can see, just like the previous iteration of B station that was actually made up of existing Synology products, so for example, B station or BSM actually has a modified version of Hyper Backup, File Station, and Synology Photos inside. They've just been made into a BSM version there. Digging into each of those individual categories and the directories on the download section for Hyper Backup and the three different B Station related directories, we're able to find not only the original SPK, that is the uh, compacted container of Synology installers for the original B station, uh, which are the RTD 1619B, that's a Realtek processor that that system runs on, but now a new x86 one. And although some of these directories are now are no longer available, one of them did iterate that it was pointing towards a Gemini Lake processor there. For those who aren't aware, the Gemini Lake is the Intel Celeron J4125. Now, I'll let it get it out of your system in the comments. I'll give you a minute. You just knock yourselves out. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 That's right. That is a mad old CPU. So long as you've been using that CPU for quite a while. On the plus side, it's actually quite nice to know they're using a CPU they've got a lot of experience with and they can really eke every drop out of it. That's good, right? Well, that Intel CPU, I believe, was a 2019, maybe even early 2019 generation processor. And here we are, knocking on the door of 2025. That's an odd CPU choice. And again, I'm saying the J4125, the Gemini Lake family actually has two different CPUs in the Synology family. The J4025 is a dual-core processor, and I hope to heck they are not going to be touching that processor in this system. But... There are, of course, other question marks. At the end of that user, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, model ID uh, was BST1708T, the 8T denoting that it's going to have an 8TB capacity. So number one, it is something that is going to be pre-populated, just like the original uh, uh, B station from Synology. But on top of that, 8TB. Is this going to be utilizing exactly the same chassis uh, with an 8TB drive inside? I don't think so. Now, this is where we tippy-toe away from uh, Gummy Bando's findings on Reddit and more into, even more so, I would say, supposition and estimation. Because, realistically, I just can't see this thing being a one-bay. It's going to be a two-bay, in my opinion. One, because one of the biggest criticisms that the original B station had was no redundancy. And an ATB single drive in there... Again, that's a lot of data suddenly in one container that you could lose without a failover. Yes, backups, of course, you're going to want to have as well. But needless to say, I think this will be a two-bay device. Also, a CPU. If it's going to be an x86, if it's going to be that Gemini Lake, the uh, J4125, you know, the, a one-bay uh, one system, a single drive, is going to form a bottleneck. It's certainly not going to be an 8TB SSD. That would be bonkers. But I do think this is going to be a two-bay system that's got a couple of 4TB drives inside from Synology's own HAT3300 or 3310 series. Another thing that's worth highlighting, by the way, with Synology's hard drives, something I'm going to work on a video on this as well, is that Synology's hard drives, although the enterprise-grade drives... The HAT5300 and the HAS5300, and they've had a few little revision changes. Although those drives are still much more expensive than Pro and Ent class drives from the likes of WD and Seagate, Synology have actually been pretty darn good in terms of the pricing of that 3300 plus series of hard drives. They're actually comparable across most of the capacities. If you look on B&H, you look on Amazon, 
the Synology HAT3300 drives are actually, you know, parity. There's parity there in pricing versus Seagate's and WD drives out there. So I'm not as annoyed about not being able to use my own 4TB drives in this device, is in, if indeed that is true. But do keep that in mind that, again, if this system is going to be a closed system that can only use their drives, that makes upgrading those hard drives inside harder. And by harder, I mean not allowed. Next up, why have this architecture if you're only going to be creating a two-bay version of the one-bay system that you've already got? The simple answer is they're not going to do that, are they? Again, supposition, guess, TBC. But I've got to say right now, I think it's going to be a dual bay and I think it's going to have that Intel processor because they're going to be scaling up what BSM is going to include. Now, whether that means they're finally going to engage with multimedia again on this because of that CPU choice, it's going to have to be seen. I think it's definitely going to keep the maintaining existing features, but I think because there has been pushback, I would argue, on a lot of the choices with regard to multimedia and that the um, original B station there that's currently available, the BST150, only has the photo application and it has the modified Synology Drive uh, file manager there, I think it's probably more likely they are going to engage with some kind of multimedia app on here. Whether that is Billy Basic DLNA type stuff, that I think is already sort of available on that system or more. But I can't see a reason why Synology would scale up from a 64-bit ARM or ARM-based processor towards an Intel one there unless it was needed for some purpose. But that's really it. No doubt some of you are going to think this is a lot of supposition based on a very small amount of information, but it is informed and based on historical information and the way this company can work. I will also highlight as well that it does make me wonder where exactly is the Synology DS224 Plus and DS423 Plus in this? Because is this something Synology are going to scale up? Again, this is pure, even more pure supposition, but... If Synology do roll out a two-bay Intel-powered system, and then they maybe roll out a four-bay after that, and again, supposition, supposition, why would they still continue to have the the, D, the two and the four-bay plus series models? Is this what a few of us have suspected and been concerned about, that Synology are going to be expanding the BSM, the B-Station series, to eat into more of the disk station series, where a lot of home users are really only going to have B-Station to play with? Again... All guesswork, all just based on what we're seeing in front of us, nothing is confirmed here. But I hope you stay with me to find out more as we all learn more on this. I look forward to talking about this system and others very, very soon. There'll be a link in the description towards the NASCAR Compare article. And seriously, take to the comments. Agree, disagree, let's talk about this. If you can prove me wrong, I want to be proved wrong because this system for me feels like a DS224 plus light based on my supposition, my guesses and the information I have seen. I want to be wrong. Please help me be wrong. But apart from this, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.